Chronicle, stories brand new, stories from biographies provided for you. The early black American cowboys were slaves owned by their masters. As their masters moved away from the cotton belt in the south and took up ranching in other areas such as Texas, black cowboys learned and developed expertise skills such as riding, bronco busting, and herding cattle. Today, the students from Fulch Middle School will dramatize the life and adventures of a black cowboy, Jake Robinson. Now let's begin our story. The place, a ranch near Rango, Texas. As the scene opens, Master John is pacing back and forth in front of his huge ranch house, talking with his wife, Mary. Mary, what am I gonna do? We have this huge new ranch, and it's not the same as it was in Alabama. We have all these new cattle horses, but not enough hands to break in the horses and round up the cattle. I'm really worried. Well, John, we do have that strong slave with us named Jake. I bet you can teach him the skills necessary to ride, break horses, and even round up steers. You know, sounds like a good idea. I'll tell Lola Pants to start training first thing in the morning. <laughs> Meanwhile, early the next morning. Howdy, Jake. You are going to get your wish. Master Don wants me to teach you how to become a cowboy. Oh, boy. That's mighty fine. I already remember some of the things you taught me from riding a mule, and I can ride a horse, and the cow hasn't gotten away from me yet. Jake, you rust up some vittles, and we'll spend the whole day breaking in those fine new horses Master John got yesterday. All right, let's go, Lopez. An hour later, at the corral. Hold that rope, Jake. Don't let him throw you. Let him know who's the boss. That's it, Jake. Ride him. Keep it up. I've done it! He quit bucking! Oh, be don't got it, Yahoo! Jake, I was watching from over young. You're gonna be a mighty fine cowboy. Thanks, boss. Five years later, Jake has become Master John's most productive cowboy. He was made leader of the cowboy team. As the scene opens, Jake, known as Second Boss Jake, Buddy Bob and Coyote Dan are busy packing saddlebags with food, water canteens, and blankets. Charlie, the cook, is cleaning pots and pans. Come on, men. It's time to go. You know that herd is looking mighty restless. This is the worst I've seen yet. What do you think about it, Buddy Bob? The herd is always noisy and restless at the start, Jay. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of trouble on the trail. Are you trying to tell me something, Coyote? Those longhorns are wild. Half of them been running wild for years. So what? Didn't we hunt them down, run them out of the thick bush, rope them, bring them in? Didn't we? We sure did. What a wild time that was. It's going to be rough on that crazy part of the trail. That's a mighty big herd to drive from Rango to Kansas City. They could stampede easily. Think whatever you feel, but I know one thing. I'm taking those 4,000 long ones to Kansas City, and I'm not gonna lose one either, not one. Jake, you got a fine team of men behind you. That's for sure. Don't I know it? The finest, and that's why we're gonna do it. Master John is depending on us. Are you ready, men? Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, men, for the time being, this I want things to be. Coyote Dan and me will ride the lead. That's mighty fine with me. Buddy Bob and Lopez will ride swing. That means to keep the herd together and don't let one stray wide. Don't worry, Dick. You can't depend on us. We haven't let a one get away yet. Chuck! Yeah, boss? You and your boys will bring up the rear. I want you to keep the herd moving and don't fall far behind. Jay, we have to bring up the rear this time. That'll mean we'll be chewing dirt all day long. One good thing for you, Charlie. It'll sure taste better than that mess you cook us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. Let's stop clowning around. We should be able to make 11 to 13 miles each day before nightfall. Can we put in more miles than that? No! This herd is for eating. And I don't want to drive them too hard. They'll only be skin and bones by the time we get them to Kansas City. Are you ready, men? Yeah. yeah. Let's get going. That river is dangerous. Been flooded for one week. Seven lousy days. Look, Jake. There's nothing we can do. But hold the herd until the water goes down. That blasted herd that just ran a stampede. Just one sudden loud sound, and they're gonna tan off in every direction. Listen, I hear horses riding hard. Could be Russell. Think so? Take your hand off them gunmen. Let's see what they want. How? How? What do you mean want? We want full water and all those long horns. Chum! Yeah, boss. Give them some salt pork. No! The man said we want long horns. None of your life. This cattle is not for taking. We ain't giving no cattle away today. You better think it over. Yeah, you better think it over. That's right, think it over. I hope it's not a chicken. I hope it's not a trick to rust the herd. Let them come. We'll be ready. They're stampeding the herd. Hurry, man, hurry. Get your gun. We could have avoided all this. Oh, what the heck? A little excitement never hurt. Let's show them in. Yeah. After two months on the trail, the team finally made it to Kansas City. After the Civil War, Jake is a free man who owns his own cattle ranch in Texas. As the scene opens, Jake is sitting on the porch of his huge ranch house talking with his wife. Willie Mae, I will never forget the days I was a slave cowboy working for Master John. One of the most exciting things I did was lead a team of men who drove 4,000 Longhorns from Rango to Kansas City. We had a long, hard fight on the trail with some rust, and finally won. Now, two months on the trail, arrived in Kansas City, and sold Master John cattle. Jake, it was nice of Master John to make you a free man after that long drive. You gave some land and cattle to homestead with. And Daddy, look what you've done for a ranch. It's now one of the largest in the state. Well, son, after you finish medical school and become a doctor, I realize that all my hardship, hard work, tears, and prayer were all not in vain. Hello, I'm Maxine Mills. I hope you enjoyed the play presented today, Jake Robinson, an early black American cowboy. As you know, each week, a reading skill from the Dort Management System has been selected and a lesson taught on that skill. In the Dorton Management System, there are four major categories. They are detail, vocabulary, inference, and generalization. The lesson presented today will focus on one of the sub-skills in the detail category. In the detail category, you will find sub-skills such as recognizing detail, sequencing events, recognizing cause and effect relationships, 
and recognizing main idea. The skill that we will focus on today is recognizing main idea, which is listed in, the, in Dort as D2. What is main idea? Main idea is what the paragraph or story is all about. It's what the author is trying to convey. I have with me today three students from Foch Middle School, and they will participate in the lesson today. Hi. Would you introduce yourselves? I'm Lisa Morrow, eighth grade, homeroom 105, Foch Middle School. I'm Elaine Hunter from Foch Middle School, 83103. Hi, I'm Kenneth Rooks from Home 8105, Foch Middle School. Today, we're going to try and develop your understanding of the skill main idea. And to do that, we're going to do a simulation activity. And what I want you to do is to pretend that you're managers in a store. And in the store, you will find boxes just like these on the shelves. The only problem with these boxes, the problem for a customer that is, is that the boxes don't have a name on them. And if a customer came in and asked for a particular item, what would you have to do? Look at all the boxes. Okay. You'd have to go and look in each and every one of these boxes to find that item. And we all know that customers do not like to be kept waiting. So what we're going to do is, in each box, we have a set of cards. And what I want you to do is to read each set of cards silently to yourself and decide on which card would best tell about all of the other ones. And when you've done that, clip that to the outside of the box and hand it back to me. Okay, who would like to try the first box? I would. Okay, Elaine. Okay. For this box, we, you have chosen animals, Elaine. That would make it easier for a customer coming in this store and easier for you, the manager. So are you telling me that in this box I will find animals? Yes. Okay, let's see if we have indeed animals in this box. Would each of you read a card and hand it back to me? Buffalo. Does buffalo belong in the box marked animals? Yes. Prairie dog. Does prairie dog belong in the box marked animal? Yes, it does. Horses. Lisa, does horses belong in the box marked animals? Yes. And longhorns. Does longhorns belong in the box marked animals? Yes. Very good, Elaine. You chose a very good name for this box. But what would have happened if by mistake, you would have chosen buffalo. They would only expect to find buffalo and then not just all kinds of animals. Okay. Buffalo would be a little too specific. And we want a name for our box that would tell us exactly what's inside. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Who would like to try the next box? I would. Kenneth? Thank you, Kenneth. Kenneth, you have named this box jeans. So as a customer looking on a shelf, in this box I'd be looking for jeans. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Let's see if we have jeans in this box. Would you each read one? Clothing. Does clothing belong in the box marked jeans? No. Boots. Does boots belong in the box marked jeans? Mm -hmm. Uh, Miss Mills? Yes, Kenneth? Uh, I believe I made a mistake. Okay, you don't think jeans is the best name for this box? 
No, I don't. Okay, you read them over silently to yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you have a better name for this box? Mm -hmm. Which, what is it? Uh, clothing. Okay, let's see if clothing is a better name for this box. Okay, each of you take a card and read it. Jeans. Does jeans belong in the box marked clothing? Yes. Okay. Spurs. Does spurs belong in the box marked clothing? Yes, it does. Okay. Boots. Does boots belong in the box marked clothing? Yes. Cowboy hats. Does cowboy hats belong in the box marked clothing? Yes. Okay. Kenneth, you first started out with jeans. What made you change your mind? Well, I realized there's many other things in there besides jeans. Okay, and what was wrong with jeans? It was? Too broad. Too specific. Okay, too specific. And clothing is a better name because it included? Many different kinds. Very good. I think that I'd like to try one of these boxes and give it a name to help you as managers in a store. And I think that for my box, I'd like to put the name on the outside, Vegetables. Just looking at the name vegetables, what would you expect to find in this box? Only vegetables. Okay, let's see if that's what we have in the box. Carrots. Does carrots belong in the box marked vegetables? Yes. Peas. Does peas belong in the box marked vegetables? Yes. Lettuce. Does lettuce belong in the box marked vegetables? Yes. Okay. And tomatoes. Does tomatoes belong in the box marked vegetables? Yes. Do you think I selected a good name? Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you think would happen if I had decided to choose food as a name for this box? You'll find many other kinds of food in the box. Well, isn't lettuce and tomatoes and peas food? Yes, but it's, they're vegetables, not bakery goods and produ produce and stuff like that. Okay. So food is a little too broad, isn't it? Yeah. It would entail having things like hamburgers and meat and fruits. And, and even though the things that we have in here are classified as food, they are really vegetables, which is another category of foods. And that is the best name for this box. Okay, you've done very well with single words, and you've been able to choose the word that best told about the others. Let's see if you can do the same thing with a group of words, using that same idea, reading the cards that have a group of words on them and selecting the card that tells about the others. Who would like to try this box? I would. Okay, Lisa. Lisa, you have, for the, the name for this box, kinds of jobs. Does that mean if I'm a custer, customer and I'm looking for a job, that I'd be able to find a job in here? Yes. Okay, let's see what kinds of jobs we have in here, if this is a good name for our box. Mending fences. Is mending fences, a, does that belong in this box? Yes. Okay. Branding cattle. Branding cattle, is that a kind of job? Does it belong in this box? Uh -huh. Building corrals. Does that, does building corrals, does that belong in our box? Yes. Men breaking in horses. Okay. Does breaking in horses belong in the box marked kinds of jobs? Yes. Okay. I think that, uh, Lisa, you selected the very best name for this box because indeed all of these were kinds of jobs. Now, we have done single words, and now groups of words. Let's see if we can do the same thing with a set of sentences. I have here on these sheets a set of four sentences. And what I'd like you to do is to read them over quietly, silently to yourself. And when you think that you know the sentence that tells about the others, raise your hand, okay? Maybe you want, might want to do that as a group. So why don't you read them silently, 
and then decide on which one as the main idea. Lisa? Longhorns have several useful purposes. Okay, uh, you're saying that out of these four sentences, the first one, longhorns have several useful purposes, is the sentence that tells about the others. Is that right? Yes. Okay, we, we call that sentence, the one that tells about the others, the main idea. The other sentences are details. They support what the main idea is all about. Lisa, would you read all four of them together? Longhorns have several useful purposes. The meat from a longhorn is used for food. Its hide is used for clothing. The horns are used as wall decorations. Okay. The other sentences under longhorns have several useful purposes are the supporting details. They help support the main idea. They help uh, the author tell what he's trying to convey. That's very good. Now I have another set of sentences I'd like you to try, and let's do the same thing. Let's have you read them silently, and then when you think you know which sentence best tells about the others, or which sentence is the main idea, then let me know, okay? Do you think you can tell us uh, which one is the main idea? Mm -hmm. A cowboy life was dangerous and exciting. Okay. The last sentence in this set of four, a cowboy's life was dangerous and exciting, is the main idea. Why don't you read all four of them together? Cowboys had to break in wild horses. They had to drive herds of cattle to market. Sometimes cowboys had to fight Indians. A cowboy life was dangerous and exciting. Okay. Kenneth, in selecting your sentence, a cowboy's life was danger dangerous and exciting, why not, ha why not choose sometimes a cowboy had to fight Indians as the main idea? Because he had to do other things that was dangerous and exciting to take the, market, the cattle to market. Okay. So that the best sentence that told about all of the other ones was the main idea, or the main idea, a cowboy's life was dangerous and exciting. You have done very well on your first try with the skill main idea. You have worked with words, groups of words. Now you've just worked with sentences. I think that you're ready now to find the main idea in a paragraph. Do you think that you can, can do that? Yes. Okay, on the chart over here, we have a set of paragraphs. And what I'd like you to do is read the paragraph silently to yourself. And when one of you thinks you have the main idea, then let me know. Okay? okay. Read it silently to yourself. Lisa? Oh, Elaine. Okay, Elaine. You'd like to try the paragraph? Yes. Okay, which one, which sentence is the main idea? The last one. The last one. Read it for us. Every day in a cowboy's life was full of hard work. Okay. Now, would you read the entire paragraph for us? A cowboy's day began at sunrise. After breakfast, Stray cattle had to be found and returned to the herd. There were barns to be built and fences to be mended. Wild horses had to be broken in and cattle had to be branded. Every day in a cowboy's life was full of hard work. Okay. What made you choose the last sentence? Every day in a cowboy's life was full of hard work. Why not? After breakfast, stray cattle had to be found and returned to the herd. 
because that just tells something that he did um, that dealt with work, what he did. Okay. All of the other sentences support the main idea about the cowboy's life being full of hard work. His uh, having to go and get stray cattle or building barns, those were the supporting details of the main idea. That was very good, Elaine. Now I would like for us to try another paragraph. And we would do the same thing. I want you to read them silently to yourself. And then when you think that you know what the main idea is, then let me know. Okay? Okay. It's on the chart over there. Lisa, would you like to tell us what the main idea is? The first sentence. The first sentence. Would you read that for us? A cowboy encountered many dangers when driving a herd of cattle to market. Okay. So then by reading that first sentence and you telling me that that's the main idea, then in the rest of the paragraph, I would want to, or I think that I would find uh, the dangers that a cowboy encountered. Let's see if that's in, indeed correct. Would you read the entire paragraph for us? A cowboy encountered many dangers when driving a herd of cattle to market. There were times when rustlers tried to steal the cattle. Indians would try and drive the cowboy from the land. Mountain lions would attack the cattle if they were not carefully watched. Oh, very good. So that we did see some of the dangers that the cowboy encountered. Things like, what were some of the things, what kind of dangers did he encounter that supported the main idea? Indians tried to drive him off the land. Okay, Indians uh, tried to drive him off the land. Anything else that uh, told us that his life was, uh, he encountered dangers? Mountain lions would attack the cattle if they were not carefully watched. Okay, very good. I think that you have done a wonderful job and that you now have a better understanding of main idea. Do you think that you do? Yes. yes. Remember that whenever someone asks you to find the main idea, think about the boxes that we work with and the sets of sentences. And when they ask, someone asks you to find the main idea in a paragraph or story, Think about which sentence best tells about all of the others. Which sentence will do it best? And then when you think that you have se uh, selected the correct sentence, then try it out and see if you do indeed have the main idea and see if all of the other sentences support it. Okay? Are there okay. any questions about the main idea? No. no. Okay. I hope that you too have a better understanding of main idea. Your homework lessons today will focus on the skills in the detail category of which main idea is a part. The skills on your homework today may be recognizing detail or sequencing events or recognizing cause and effect relationships. Middle school students, you can find your homework in the today's edition of the Detroit News. Tune in next week when the play that will be presented is Treasure Island.